G'day everyone. Happy Sunday. Or Saturday evening as it may be where you are. Just tilt it with this up a smidge. That should be good to go. Outstanding. Uh, so this, hello there, Heresy for Heretics, hello Top. This piece is part of this little <coughs> uh, diorama-ish thing, but I'm not happy with the colour palette on this yet. This feels a little bit um, not right. Same can be said for this chick who is also a part of said uh, project. But I think that's her hair. So I'm hoping I can get this color palette right. <coughs> but I think I'm going to start by airbrushing a brown. No, I'm going to start by airbrushing a no, brown. What brown, though, is the question? Hmm. Yes. We will use this Royal Brown by Kimura. It's one of the colours in the new set, which I found difficult to use. Hey buddy, what's going on? You're trying to get some present from me, are you? I don't think we've got any presents left, buddy. Yes, the new, uh, the new Chimera set. The pigmentation is different to the original set and I found them pretty challenging to use but I have I have used a couple of them um, with reasonable success this one being one of them mostly through the airbrush though So it is <coughs> only a week away from the Ark Open in uh, beautiful Melbourne, Victoria, where I'll be flying down to spend the weekend with uh, Andrew Buckley. Yes, it is indeed from Limbo. Hugo to collect from outside, but that needs to dry anyway. downloaded a computer game yesterday. I'm not one for computer games as many as you as many of you know. But I downloaded Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if I am interested in playing it for long enough. Heard a lot of good things. <laughs> I am, uh, yeah, I'm going to be there, so hopefully, uh, hopefully get to meet him, say good day, um, you know, if they want, I'll sign an autograph for him, but, you know, that's up to them.
At this point in time, I'm really hoping that I will be able to today build a box. be able to transport the vampire diorama down however I can't enter it but they've said I can bring it down and display it if I want which uh, probably feels like a cool, a cool thing to do without necessarily exactly what you want when you spend you know, metric shit ton of time painting something but whatever Yeah, so this this brown colour, whatever it is, is um, is really quite nice. It's a reddish brown, royal brown. That's some really nice um, nice stuff. So I'm okay with that. Let's find some skin tones we can use. Oh, I finished that trick. That I was painting last stream. There she is. Are we on autofocus? Yeah, how good is it? How good's Reacher? Fuck, it was awesome. <laughs> Out of nowhere, I just watched it and I was like, this is fucking mad. Hello, Mr. Void's Poison Husband. Welcome. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, I, I, yeah. As you know, mate, I'll get around to it at some point, probably. Probably. I just doing then uh, off to the side I have a paint shaker so I was shaking this paint um, and what I'm actually doing is painting models this one which is eventually going to turn out like this one I hope or similar maybe different we'll see Uh, yeah, digital art and uh, physical art have some pretty significant differences, so. The opposite is of course true though, I could not do anything to do with uh, digital art. So I was having a bit of a bit of a rough time this week with, with painting toy soldiers. I just feel like I've lost not necessarily the the skill uh, in moving a brush around, but just the the color choices, the value, how to control value. I just feel like I lost all that. Some of the pieces I had started painting just looked really, really bad. 
I think I managed to recover the uh, priestess chick. <coughs> but this diorama little, little project is all over the place. All over the place. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we can recover this. Yeah, I definitely think that's a part of it, buddy. Um, plus the, uh, you know, the break just after uh, after Crimson, just having a little little pause. Don't necessarily forget how to paint, but yeah, just decision making's different, all sorts. But yeah, the, sm the small scale stuff and, and the approach, the techniques is definitely a part of it. <clears throat> yeah, this is, uh, this is Limbo Miniatures. I can't remember if it's called... I think it's called the Necromancer. model so sometimes people ask me how do you how do you pull yourself out of a slump <clears throat> and I can't really remember having a slump where um, it wasn't it wasn't just because I'd done you know gone too hard paint for too much <laughs> um, it's usually just because I burn myself out. So for me, the answer to a slump is always just take, take a fucking break. Like you don't you don't need to be painting. You don't need to be a robot that just um, is constantly doing stuff. But I do also say that the key to improvement is practice, right? So constant. Practice crucial, um, and so the way I usually get myself out of a slump is just paint some little stuff, some little board games figures or something. So I'm still painting, still painting, but just to a different scale, exactly as Topless just said. TV. What a great man he is. What a great man. Hope he's doing alright. Oh, Vincenzo. Haven't seen him in a while. Is indeed an absolute legend. So has everyone seen Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania?
Oh, wow. Top. A little bit on the eight ball there, buddy. Uh, Quantum Mania feels like essential viewing for the continuity as a whole. Black Panther felt like a love letter to Chadwick. So the two were quite different experiences. I also think Quantum Mania is actually a pretty good standalone movie, but. <coughs> There's quite a few people who've been feeling that way, Top, isn't there? Just a bit down on the whole MCU. Maybe feeling like they just gone a little bit off, off what made them successful in the first place, but yeah. It's what it is. I read an article somewhere that said they'd maybe decided to trim down a bit because they felt like their projects weren't landing. So when I was painting my X-Men I basically had that song on repeat <laughs> I actually think this is the first time I've used this flesh tone. Um, it's really good, actually. It's really good. This is a um, one of the famous Nocturna set. It's one called Medium Flesh, I think something? Where is it? Where did I put it? I was just shaking it a second ago, god damn it. Well, it's, it's from the AK. No, not the AK, Nocturna set. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> this is the first time I've used it. I'm sure of it though. Ah, oh, there it is. Medium flesh. Medium flesh. It's good. And now we'll move into a wee little bit of sunny skin tone I think and maybe maybe I should move a little bit more towards something else that's a little pinkish a little more pinkish where's my white flesh at Yes. 
one of the issues with this this piece, um, this issue is probably the wrong word, but one of the challenges I'm going to have with this piece is the three-dimensional nature of it. There is a lot of good viewing angles for it. You can spin it around on a on its base, and you should be able to see. different interesting angles and that's a particularly for a model like this which I think is a very um, two-dimensional figure you know it's she's super flat when you look at that so you, you have to sort of contemplate how you can get the best highlighting and stuff for the, for the viewing angle that people are going to be looking at predominantly but then also try and not make it Shit house from other angles. Hey Top, how do you feel about your painting at the moment, mate? still there. You, how do you feel about your painting at the moment? <laughs> yeah, it's good. No, I just think you're doing some really good stuff. I thought that um, that Uther was really nice, like salmon metals. You know, the colours were really nice and good and interesting. Green highlights are good. Yeah, definitely feel like you've um, you've levelled up significantly since a few years ago when I first met you. It does, yes, it does feel soft. I think you're still just on the cusp of that value. Um, understanding how you can how you can actually utilize value but not lose saturation I think you and Benny are actually in a similar position I feel like when it comes to that Stop being shit is a wonderful goal to have. Wonderful goal. I highly recommend a wonderful article that a great Australian painter wrote. It's called Psychology of Miniature Painting. If you haven't read it, do yourself a favour. There it is. How good. That's 
why everyone loves you, Todd. <laughs> well, there you go. You're obviously a man of culture. The thing about that article, right? That's all. It's all from my my work, like training, managing people. All comes from from there. But it's still so relevant to just everything, everything that you do in life. So, get amongst it. Well, that's good. Yeah. We're our own worst enemy sometimes. Most of the time, actually. Probably fair to say. Great song by Lit. It's no surprise to me, I am my own worst enemy. Every now and then I fuck the living shit out of me. <clears throat> so this stream today and then next week or oh sorry and then tomorrow night will be normal next week there'll be no streams from the painting desk because I'll be in Melbourne with Andrew but we may actually do a a stream together next weekend live from Bucks's house we'll see See, might happen. Might happen. Also, might not. All right, we'll do some airbrushing to clean that up a bit, but let's bring some browns into the mix, shall we? couple of browns yeah I'm looking forward to it mate looking forward to it I'm not looking forward to the flight I don't know if I, I don't know if I talked about this on stream I think I did I went through a went through a weird period like I've done so much traveling so much international traveling and um, then just before COVID I, I just got really really scared about um, flying on an aeroplane. I was just super, super worried about flying. For, for like no discernible reason. I could not tell you why. There was nothing that happened. But it was just a, it was just a awful, awful period. And um, it ended up uh, with me being very, very fortunate and not having to fly on a plane for basically two years, thanks to COVID. Um, so two years go by, I then jump on a plane for the first time to fly to Canberra, and I was absolutely fine. No concerns, just got on the plane, had a nice flight, super calm, easy as. And I think I've been on a plane a couple of times since then, not a lot, probably not, not as much as I have in the past um, so yeah so I'm just I'm, I'm now still like a little bit nervous about um, traveling on a plane but it's it's nowhere near what it was so it's, 
pro I wonder if it's probably more that I'm, I'm concerned that I'll go back to feeling that way because it was awful awful Weird time. Weird time in my life, really. <laughs> I should paint on the plane. That'd be good. Now my latest, uh, my latest game that I've been playing is uh, is a lot of Marvel Snap on my uh, on my phone, and I'm not going to be able to play that on the plane. Oh, I think they have Wi-Fi now on a lot of flights, so maybe they will. Maybe we'll be able to play it, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, no, no, <clears throat> haven't been watching The Last of Us, but probably will. Um, in a little while, when it's all released, I don't think I'm going to do the week to week thing. Because I've already committed to doing it on. Well, I haven't, I haven't started yet, but Carnival Row. I'm getting real sick of cunts doing it. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but... <laughs> it's been a while since I've streamed regularly. I'm so sick of streaming mobs. Doing this week-to-week -week shit. Just drop it all at once, will you, so I can watch it, please. Uh, yeah, so I will I will definitely uh, watch it. Yeah, heard a lot of good things, a lot of good things from a lot of people. So yeah, I'll be honest. <coughs> yeah, this is the thing. I get why they do it, right? It makes so much more sense. It builds excitement. You know, people are talking about it during the week, pumped up. You release full season from one go everyone watches it but can't talk about it because no one else has watched it yet you know it makes sense I just don't like it Yeah, I, I feel like the the Netflix model um, was awesome when it came out and it was its selling point. And now they've realised, well, there's value to be had in still releasing it week to week and then trying to go backwards, but...
<laughs> Speaking of Netflix, we've got a couple, uh, or one coming out, Sh Shadow and Bone Season 2. I don't know if you guys watched that, but it was quite good. It was quite good, Shadow and Bone. Hugo didn't like it, evidently. Yeah, yeah, it was just fun. The uh, second season looks good. But the most important show that we'll ever watch is coming out in about two weeks. Yeah, it might be all that you get. Boom, boom. Heaven knows I've tried. Yeah. Hello there, Andrew. You broke your god hands last night. I don't know what... Do you mean your god hand from Kingdom Death? Or do you mean... Something else? Ah, oh, gotcha. Roger, roger. Yeah, I'm off to Bunnings today to try and build a uh, build a box. It's a rush job, so I don't want to try and get Jimbo to do it. So I'm going to try and do it myself. You got four days for an arc entry. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off for him. Yeah, I'm just going to bring my. Uh, my chick with a shield and my <coughs> um, orc archer, I think. How heavy is the diorama? It's actually not that heavy. Um, really? I don't think. I don't know, maybe... Maybe a kilo or two? Well, that's the thing, Top. I'm going to try and make a box <coughs> with a handle and see if I can fit that inside the, reg the regulation size. <laughs> Which I may not be able to. Yeah. <coughs> I'll regret it if I don't try. Plus, I also need to build a box for it to send it to its um its new owner. So it's a necessary task anyway. But yeah. Uh. Top, I think you've got to understand the size of Australia, mate. Um, just go and Google how long does it take to drive from Brisbane to Sydney, or Brisbane to Melbourne, rather. <laughs> is it <clears throat> is it no big deal uh, 
but to answer your question, no, we, we actually really have poor train travel between states. There is, uh, to my knowledge, no, no way to travel from Brisbane to Melbourne via train. Is that right, Rocket? Sorry? Could you travel from Brisbane to Melbourne by a train? No. Yeah. <laughs> you came from Brisbane to Sydney? Yeah. Oh, there's probably there's a, probably a way then, isn't there? Oh, no. Garn is from uh, Melbourne to Darwin, no, Adelaide, not, Adelaide, Adelaide to Darwin, yeah. Yeah, enjoyed it. <clears throat> A lot of fun. Sure, I just remembered. I wanted to hire a car. Well, I was, I was contemplating hiring a car. I may not, because I'm going to get Ubers on Monday. Yeah, Airman was good. Really good. How's the how's the um, first season of the Amazon show top? Is that is it good? Is it worth checking out or? <clears throat> okay, cool. Is the second season the the Mighty Nine, or is it just a continuation of the? first story or did they cram all of the first story into it Vox Machina cool oh. we started a D&D &D campaign on Tuesday goodness me goodness me it is uh, my favourite character I've ever written for Dungeons and Dragons. Absolutely one of the stupidest characters I've ever come up with. It's so great. My character's name is Brutus. He is a rogue, level one, monk, level two. He's character level three, and the <laughs> uh, the whole time uh, I was writing this character, I was just I was cracking up. My my the DM who's DMing for us is the guy who I drove down with um, for CanCon, 
and so we, we sort of wrote the character as we were driving down one of the things we did and his uh, his basic premise the, the thing that I've modelled him on is he's Batman so he's going to have a utility belt he just fights with his fists he uses like At uh, level three for a monk, there's, they can join a thing called the Way of Shadow. So he's training with the League of Shadows. <laughs> and he's, uh, he's got a cloak. He just flies, he just, anyway, the whole time we're playing uh, on Tuesday night, I just kept, I just kept doing the Batman voice. <laughs> Is that a goal? The, the task that we were given in the first like five minutes was we had to find this this priestess chick and she was she better go to a temple and so I walked into the temple and I just <laughs> started screaming where is she which is um really really very very funny uh, and I did I just did that the whole the whole night I was just doing Batman quotes and of course doing Batman quotes from the college humor Batman Oh, really seals in the flavor, etc., etc. And then I was leaping from rooftops and rafters, and you know, just being Batman. It was wonderful, wonderful time. I rolled really good stats, except for one. I've got dexterity and wisdom are both eighteen. It is outstanding. Uh, strength, constitution, 14 and 15. Intelligence, 10. Charisma, as you well know, Bruce Wayne, very charismatic guy. Brutus Wainwright, not as charismatic. Charisma, 5. <laughs> He's really struggling. So he thinks everyone likes him. He's wrong. But he's oblivious to it. Where is she? Let's keep going. Uh, vengeance. Uh, I am having a lot of fun with it, yes. Uh, and that's cool, Pathfinder. Good stuff. I rate, uh, rate Pathfinder. My, my best D&D memories are actually um, when 3rd edition came out. I was working for Games Workshop at the time. And was really close mates with um, the guys that I worked with. And they were super jazzed on D&D. And I was like, oh yeah, cool, I'll play. And um, yeah, we did a campaign for uh, probably about two years, actually. Uh, and yeah, we played through third edition uh, into 3.5. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I was just so jazzed for D and D back then. I played a couple of campaigns since, um, but probably not as often as I would have liked. I loved collecting the books. Uh, a collection of all of the uh, fourth edition, which I never actually played because it was bad, but also just never had it. Hey, Necromancer. Um, you painted this model, didn't you, Necromancer? I seem to recall it was a good one of yours. And then Pathfinder as well. So Pathfinder was, um, yeah, really, really good. Um, product, 
like the actual the books and stuff because I bought all them too. Really, really cool. Yeah, cool. Can you feel it? Do do can you feel it? Do do can you feel it? It's airbrush time. I'm wondering, um, at some point my eyesight's going to get a lot worse, right, as I get older. I'm wondering if I should start trying to paint using this screen. Like, people who can do this, that's so impressive. You don't get the, uh... so much harder than it fucking looks. Yeah, exactly. There's no depth perception. You can't tell how far away your, your brush is. Wow, that's so hard. Wow. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I might do. Or glasses or something. No, no concerns now, but at some point I'm sure it'll, it'll get worse. It's inevitable. I'm feeling my own mortality at the moment, friends. I'm about to turn, uh, about to turn the big four zero, and uh, young Andrew is not far off. Well, no, what are you? You're Thirty-seven or something bucks this year? Or have I way overestimated? You're like twenty. I 
feel like I've just done him a massive disservice there. I just have no idea how old he is either. Thirty-seven. I was right. Yes. Fucking go, me. Yeah. You are. No, it's yeah. You're the sixth, don't you? No. Yeah. Or eighth. Kissing and I sold my soul to the cigarette to the black market man. Evening, cold turkey. I don't reckon I've felt it really until the last couple of years. It's really started to be noticeable now that I am an old man. Tracing hookers, get a champion. It's an outstanding, outstanding name. Oh, I feel like it's time for us to whip out the old airbrush and maybe try to feel like a reasonable painter. First, we'll use contrast paint to feel like a reasonable painter. My <laughs> airbrush needs a name. That's a good call, Andrew. Any recommendations? Jimothy? Chuck sprays. It's very good. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the reasons I like it. <laughs> That's pretty good, Andy. <laughs> You don't do you don't do a lot of funny stuff anyway. but that's that's up there, mate. You've, you've done a good job with that one. Uh, very good, very good. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's see what we can do about this. Well, the last plane out of Sydney is almost gone. Another seven flying hours. I'll be landing in Hong Kong. There ain't nothing like those kisses from a jaded Chinese princess. Well, the last plane out of Sydney is almost gone. Uh, before I get uh, 
get cracking with Chuck Sprays. Um, I mean, we'll just show this 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 chick off. Ooh. Uh, I, don't, I don't really understand what I, what I was doing with this, but I really like it. I don't know if these are supposed to be moons or bubbles or what, but they look cool. I don't know why I stopped with that many. I don't know. It just, yeah, this is how it came out. Fun. Yeah, I, I did actually try yours. You can't see it. I tried doing some gold filigree down here and I didn't like it because the gold was a little too similar to the red because it's a very warm red, so it didn't work. But yeah, I think it's a good idea, your idea. Thank you, Dion. Not bad for an hour's work. Yeah, I started it today. You can rewind the stream and have a watch if you want. get Betty a scrub. Yeah. Blue green. Bit of pterodon turquoise. When I say get better scrub, I don't mean you guys are shit house. All I mean is practice, 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 practice. Anyone can do that in an hour. If you paint for the next 20 years, then you'll be able to do it.
yeah, it'll take a little while, unfortunately. golden piece of advice that I give everyone about painting toy soldiers the most important the most important thing above all is to have fun paint fun models do stuff that you find fun because grinding and hating it is not going to result in the outcomes that you want. You can, you really can. You don't have to you have to push through something because you're like, oh, I started it, I've got to finish it. Just quit. You'll be way happier. Now I say that facetiously, but it's 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 a hobby. Have fun. If you're not having fun, you're missing the point. And that will create more interest and desire in doing it again. Which is giving you the exact thing you need, which is practice, which will get you to the outcome that you want eventually.
Uh, if you haven't painted any Limbo Miniatures figures uh, before, I really recommend them. Um, I don't know who's in charge of the aesthetic for those guys, but they are they are just dead set right in my wheelhouse. I, I, I've got I've got a resume that includes many, many, many Limbo Miniatures that I've painted really, really a lot. So. Hey Rocket! Hey Mo! Hey so I really recommend uh, their figures, they're just a really nice... Um, yeah, the wolf girl's awesome. She was just sensational. go through my, my resume of limbo models I've done a fuck a fucking lot of them. I reckon I've done about ten. Which Kickstarter is it uh, that you're waiting on? Which one did they do? I didn't get in on that one because I've painted a lot of Limbo models already. Roger, Roger. I'm going to make a probably not controversial statement but a statement there's very few miniature manufacturing companies that are run by savvy business people most of them are run by artists artists are very very ordinary at Deadlines, organising, etc. Now, I think Limbo is definitely one of the better ones, but artists. I got a new phone uh, a couple of days ago, Samsung Galaxy S23. Have a go of the camera, 200 megapixel. I don't even know they made cameras that big. 200. Did I need a new phone? No. Did I get swayed by the fact that they have a 200 megapixel camera? Yes. Am I pleased with my decision? How's that butter going, Rocket? The lure pack. Yeah.
Yeah, get in. She doesn't like it. She's like, the pack sucks. I said, how dare you? Isn't it rocket? I've got a question, friends, right? So, every time I see a piece by Dave, by Liam, by other motherfuckers that are actually good, I think to myself, how do they even do that? How do they even get that level of detail right? Do you think it's the magnifying... Because I know Dave uses a little magnifying lens. Do you think that's, do you think that's the key? Because I've got a steady hand. I can I can put my brush where I want it. But I don't know that I can see that level of detail. You know? Is the magnifying glass the key? Andrew, don't tell me that, mate. I would like to be able to pay and not have to put time. I'd just like to be able to pay for the privilege of being good. Please. Uh, I think that's I think that's Darren Hahn who does that. Or Kiago Murakami. But yeah, not sure. Yeah, Darren Hahn is the guy who does crazy, crazy faces. just talking about that before actually Minimath where I was trying to uh, trying to do that using the screen fuck me it's hard no depth perception really really challenging Go on record here and say this model is fantastic. I love it. And you got to sit next to Dave during Natalia's class. So you know the answer to this question, mate. It's sorcery, right? He's an alien. Does he wear magnifying glasses on his head? Yes, see? This is the key, mate. It's magnifying glasses. That's the answer to all my problems. This is why I'm not a good painter. We're going to get it on the magnifying glasses act. That's what's up. That I would believe. <laughs> you 
can't you can't uh, yeah you can't be as good as he is and not be pedantic. Which one did you do? Oh, Alice. That's right. critic interesting I mean you know how precise I am so I am I'm just not sure that I will ever be that guy and I think I'm okay with that This is the this is the point I try to make to many many people. You can't go out there expecting to paint like Dave Colwell and not be willing to devote everything that Dave Colwell devotes to it. And if you can't, then you won't paint like Dave. So reevaluate your goals. No good? Protein rich. It's a hunger hunger crushing combo. Oh, it's nice. It doesn't taste like chocolate though.
Yeah, I think I think it's fair to say there's a reason why those two are, you know, considered some of the best painters in the world. Um, I didn't actually, this will sound weird, but I wasn't actually paying a lot of attention to what was being said on the judging stream. Um, most of my focus was on uh, getting the next model ready or you know, making sure everything else was happening the way it was supposed to be happening. So I didn't really actually get to listen to a lot of the feedback um, unless I was stepping myself in or being asked to step in to break a tie so um, yeah I, I didn't I didn't really hear too much of it but from what everyone has said Natalia was ruthless which is good but you need ruthlessness. G'day Gary, uh, this is from Limbo Miniatures, uh, I believe I believe it's called the Necromancer, maybe, Sh Sh Shale, I think, Shale, something like that. It's good, good fun. Far. It's good fun. I should definitely not do this, but I just I just love how powerful this colour is and how vibrant and orange it makes oranges and yellows. It's a colour from Vallejo, it's called Orange Fire. It's an airbrush colour. And as soon as I paint it on an area that I've done in orange, it just goes boom punches you in the face with power and I love it I love it I love it so much it just it's just saturation generation in a nutshell it's one of my secret one of my secret colours alongside peanut butter volume is pink maybe a couple of others look at that 
Look at how much pop that gives it. Pop, pop. Fluoro red, yeah, there's another one. Little signature deno color. Probably not too many more. Yep, uh, that one that I just used is uh, is this one here. It's called Naranja Fuego, Orange Fire. It's a game air color. Dilute it. It'll pump up the volume along with the bass. Hey, by the way, I'm, I'm getting you that Doctor Strange, yeah? I'm going there on Wednesday. Do me a solid. Pick me up an Agent Venom and Spider Woman if they've got two. We'll do a swapsies. Rock and roll. Hey Rocket, do you want to wait like 20 minutes and then we can go to Bunnings as well? Uh, yeah, okay. Cool. As long as you're okay with going to groceries after that. Because I need to go to groceries. <laughs> yeah, but we can get a shred bike for groceries. Uh, I just realised you might not be able to fit what I'm planning on purchasing in your car, so. I don't want to drive because I don't want to lose my car park. Change of plan. What are we doing? Oh, I got really excited about the car park. I'm going to be getting a sausage. Yeah, I'm going to Roger. Roger, Roger, Roger. Thank you. Um, yeah, all right, let's do it. So I'm enjoying what I've done here, friends, but my, my 
issue that I come back to having discussed it at the very start of the stream. How the fuck does this tie into the other chick's colour palette? It doesn't. Just pick one of the one of the dual ones that they they sell. Tops. Spidey verse. I think he's a good one. Yeah. How about I how about I pull the uh, pull the pieces together and see how we feel. I'm I'm definitely not locked into the colour palette on the uh, on the that could be fun. G'day Shirty, it's from Limbo Miniatures Champion. Yeah, I mean it's actually coming together okay really, isn't it? Yeah, so I think if we change this hair colour to a orange hmm I think orange could actually be all I need to change and then obviously I'm just going to continue refining the base yeah I think that means we need to make her cloak green then is the most logical choice uh, the snake piece is actually a plinth from this model that I elected not to use on this model and use on this diorama instead. Green, green, green. Yeah, I think finishing off that bubble chick was a really good move because it's just reminded me of a few little things that I forgot. One of which is things always look bad until the end. Sometimes you just you get lost in the weeds, everything's looking terrible, and then you bring it all together in the end. Yeah. And yeah, I just forgot that for a bit. Both of these look like shit, and that was despondent. Despondent for Deno. That's okay. 
<laughs> well. Okay, chip and white knight. You hit it. Yeah, you do green cloak on your Uther. Feels good. job. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. Let's spend the night together from now until forever. Boom, 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 boom. I want to go boom, boom. for a tremendous deno tip these are wonderful tips hopefully someone's been writing them down every time I've said one on stream collating them into a book that we collaboratively can sell become millionaires so uh, get on that maybe someone could just trawl through the uh, last two years of streams and um, make a note of all the great tips I've given that'd be good uh, I love texture on fabrics and I know painting smooth is often the gold standard but you can use an airbrush to smooth things out after creating interesting texture in the first place. So my tip is this, sometimes an old shitty brush is the right tool to use for a, a rough and textured piece of fabric because you get to leave some brush strokes on there which you can then use uh, as texture. Natural variation is something Shane Warne used to talk about all the time and who am I to argue with the greatest leg spinner in the history of cricket? So allow your brush to create natural variation. And then when you begin to refine that can just be a little bit more unique and interesting. Did he? Well, that's convenient timing. I look forward to raiding over onto that guy. In approximately five minutes.
is pretty good for two hours, I reckon. to a tiny little touch more on the cloak and we will be finishing up for the day I'm going to play some Hogwarts Legacy today Let's see if I like it and, uh, hopefully build a box Do a smidge more painting in the afternoon. The world is my oyster. And now we'll just switch down to a smaller brush, a more accurate brush. And we'll just get in there with some of these. We'll always use the uh, the airbrush at the end, and that'll just smooth some of this out and just leave the vestiges of texture. Seriously, is anyone going to do that book idea? That's a good idea. That can be the next Alfonso. Yep, that could be a working title. Uh, the is that the new FAK FAQ one from AK. I haven't read it, but I think Bucks has. I think he said it was really good. Yep. Yeah, Buxo. Buxo said it was good. The um, yeah, the Kirill, the Kirill book I bought, I read through, and then I just gave it away. <laughs> it just was like far too much for my brain to comprehend. Because I'm. Um, Very unintelligent. Alright, last. Last little bit before we head off.
I don't know what it is about Limbo Miniatures friends, but Jeepers, I just love them. They're so good. Alright. Let's go give my friend, friend Ben a raid. And uh, thank you for joining me today. We'll uh, head off into the wide blue yonder. Okay, let's go. See you soon, friends. Have a wonderful week. Make sure you see you on Party Monday tomorrow night. Uh, these minis here, sculpted by Skullforge Studios. Oh. The lovely team over there. So they're really good. Whoa! Hey, Big Deno, what's going on, mate? Um, yeah, so I'm pretty keen to try, try something out different with them. So here's where we started off. Building a brick wall very slowly. So, let's see. How you doing, friend? How was your stream? Yeah, lots of bricks. Lots of bricks. We have this pile of uh, miniatures here. So this is the current project pile of things that I want to play with and build. So yeah, the idea is I want to try and do two, two separate scenes on the one diorama. So this front scene here. A panda for lunch is there. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Have a good lunch, dude. I will see you later, my friend. Uh, yeah, so... The, uh, thanks for the raid too, man. I appreciate it. So yeah, the um, the idea is uh, we're gonna have this sort of abandoned building front with Joel and Ellie on the outside here. Yes, next weekend is gonna be a fun weekend. We're gonna get to hang out and enjoy a lot of time. It's gonna be really good. I'll see you there. Fuck, that's right. So, fuck, where was I? I'm fried today. Um, oh yeah, so we're going to build, this is the outside of an abandoned sort of building. Here's the doorway I want for it, and then we have a window that's going to be here. The idea is, let me show you, Joel is going to be here, as if they are sort of an alley next to him, as if they're scouting to go into the building, and on this side, the inside of the building, we're going to have a clicker with the full cordyceps explosion up the wall and on the floor and then we're going to have another clicker which I've got here All right, bro. that I 3D printed and this one is going to be inside here so I want to try and do two different uh, alright so if we go to the Bunnings or uh, the pet barn out near the Bunnings that'll be alright hey
everybody.